Well, it's time for the madness to begin, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I don't know about the women's bubble teams. I'm not going to lie to you because it's pretty, pretty more clear cut that some bubble teams got in. Uh, so I can't tell you about the bubble because nobody really talked about the women's bubble, but the men's bubble for March Madness. Thanks, Mid Thieves. Thanks. So Indiana State, you're out because, you know, first things first, you didn't win the Missouri Valley. Second thing is, is your non-conference schedule is pretty bad. You lost to Michigan State, who got in. Michigan State's a team that, you know, has the probably the toughest schedule in the country. So, you know, it's kind of like, what do you do with them? Do you leave them out? Do you leave them in? I, at this point, I was just like, you know what? They, they, they played a tough schedule than anybody else here. So, I mean, might as well put them in. So, I haven't really uh, – if Michigan State was going to be in, they should probably be in as a play-in team at this point. Um, Virginia, no people have issues with Virginia being in here, but here's the thing. Um, they were going to have to select some more teams in the ACC anyway because of what NC State did again. NC State stole a bid. So, you know, the whole, well, well, Virginia with their offense doesn't deserve to be there or they didn't have such and such wins and everything like that. Um, again, Third place in the ACC. They have the victories to back it up in non conference play as well. You know, there was no way we were going to have a two bid ACC. You know, it's just, it's just not how this works. What was surprising is that we had a three bid Big East. And again, it was mostly because the Big East teams played themselves onto the bubble anyway. Like St. John's did not impress me at all. You know, you know, I get it. They, they got pretty far in the Big East tournament, but you know that wasn't good enough. They were going to have to win more games, and they, they along with Providence, Seton Hall, you know Villanova as well, just middling. All four of them just middling teams. The only team that probably should have been in was Seton Hall out of this group. Providence, eh, St. John's, eh, Villanova, double. Uh. <clears throat> so yeah. Um, yeah, there should be four Big East teams in, but again, Big Bid Thieves stole the show here. Uh, Pittsburgh, uh, I have no idea, you know, where people are coming from with Pittsburgh. They're going to finish behind Virginia, Virginia in the ACC. You know, they don't have the resume really to back it all up. They do in some ways, but in other ways, they do not. And Oklahoma just <laughs> – Oklahoma didn't beat anybody. One, they did beat Texas, who is somehow a seven seed. Like, there's some weird, weird things going on with this tournament. Like, you have Texas as a seven seed. We should not be a seven seed. I'm going to be real with you right now. We should not be a seven seed. Um, Iowa State played themselves all the way up to the two line, but there was no way they were going to, you know, go past North Carolina. Though, I'm just, it's just the way it is. You know, that's not going to happen. Um, especially with the number of losses. The number of losses also have to matter as well. So, you know, Iowa State has more losses in North Carolina. So that wasn't going to happen. Uh, and I know the, the committee probably, you know, wraps things up, you know, like late Saturday and everything like that. But again, you know, the Bid Thieves really came on strong this year. They came on way stronger than I thought. And, you know, watching throughout this weekend, was just a crazy thing to see. You have teams like Duquesne winning, you know, the A-10, stealing a bid there instead of, you know, Dayton, you know, easily taking care of business. But they were a seven seed anyway. Um, so it, it doesn't make any sense. And Oklahoma, again, you know, just played themselves out by just getting absolutely blitzed, you know, in the conference. Didn't, you know, you know we thought nine big 12 teams were going to make it, but I'm actually kind of glad there weren't because, again, there's just some teams in the Big 12 that really should not be here. You know, Texas is one of those teams that probably should be in the tournament, at least, you know, not as a seventh seed. Definitely like a play-in type team, you know, TCU as well. That's what I'm thinking. But everybody else, you know, because Texas and TCU had the wins in conference play, you know, that mattered, and Oklahoma did, that's why they're in, you know. It sucks to suck. Uh, but the end, Big East, absolutely disgusting <laughs> the way these with the way the bubble teams play. Like, you know, I've seen projections where the bubble teams like just squarely on the bubble. 
you know, like St. John's, Providence, Seton Hall, Villanova, all squarely on the bubble. They were going to be on the bubble all the way up until Sunday anyway. And, you know, with the way the things shook out, yeah, I was expecting, you know, I was expecting some Big East teams to miss. I only, I only wanted like four Big East teams anyway, you know. The, once you get past, you know, the Marquette, Creighton tier, you know, UConn's at the top and Marquette, Creighton, and then it's just a bunch of bid, you know, going on down. It, you know, it's not like the Big 12 beating each other up. You know, a bunch of, you know, a bunch of teams that are actually, you know, ranging from average, you know, don't don't tell your mother I said Kansas is average, but they are average. That's why they're a four seed now, which is crazy. Kansas is a four seed. It's kind of funny, actually. Um, I don't really have too many problems with the bracket itself. You know, it's just a lot of weird stuff as usual. You know, it's the same thing every year. So I can't complain anymore about you know, the men's bracket that I can't complain anymore. Um, the only other thing really, um, you know, really big NBA thing really is that Boston's clinched a playoff berth. That's about it. You know, you have teams like the Warriors, Lakers, Mavs, Suns, all battling it out in the West for those last couple spots. Uh, you know, Minnesota, Oklahoma City still at the top of the West, Denver. Definitely looking consistent, although Kyrie Irving made a big shot today to beat the Denver Nuggets, which is crazy, crazy shot. You know, you know, um, Milwaukee's gaining surge in the, in the East as well. Um, definitely, you know, just to pivot a little bit to talk about the NBA a little bit. Um, no Giannis today, but it didn't matter. Again, Milwaukee's another team that has a lot of good stuff going for them, you know, like Bobby Portis, who just – came and showed up today with a 30 plus point performance you know you still have you know big time dame lillard you still you still have brooke lopez you still have middleton you know in there you still have porzingis i mean oh wait porzingis is from boston what am i what am i saying stupid <laughs> let's say wait who else uh Trey Crowder? No way. I'm I'm tripping. I'm tripping right now. I'm I'm messing up. I'm messing up. But yeah, Milwaukee has a solid core. They can definitely get themselves to the conference finals. Um, Philadelphia, I don't know. You know, as long as Joel Embiid is out, that definitely ruins team chemistry. New York, same thing. They have a lot of pieces in place and everything like that. But again, it's how they're going to stack up against you know Boston and Milwaukee really. And in Cleveland as well, definitely watch out for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Jared Allen, Gary Scarlin, Donovan Mitchell, even Evan Mobley when he, you know, he, when when it, him and Allen form a one-two punch, you know, you know, it, it, that's a scary team right there. You know, those Cavs are a scary team. So yeah, um, on to the women's bracket, which really has no big surprises at all. Like, no big surprises, nothing crazy at all, you know. It's just a lot of teams that are a lot of heavy hitters. I hope some people are mad that Fairfield's like a 13 seed. But again, that one loss in non-conference play. And then, you know, that the fact that they're in the MAC, you know, you know, unfortunately, it just is what it is with that. So with that out of the way, you know, South Carolina is still undefeated. Iowa's a one seed. Texas is a one seed. And USC are all one seeds. You know. So what about my final four? Well, for the women's side of things, my final four looks like this. South. So yeah, it'll be South Carolina, Iowa, Yukon, and Texas, and and I do have a change in what I think will be the national champion. Um, I said at the beginning of the year it would be the Iowa Hawkeyes, you know, led by Clay, Caitlin Clark. But now, but now, my prediction is going to be the women's champion. Now, now that we are in March, it will be South Carolina. They will stay undefeated. And they will win a national championship over Iowa. You know, so. You know, there was some increase to Iowa late, but, you know, again, still won the Big Ten tournament. Texas took care of business in the Big 12 tournament. UConn, of course, took care of business in the Big East. So, 
Uh, Pac-12 was a dogfight. ACC was also a dogfight in which Notre Dame, you know, got the crown and everything like that. So, yeah. Um, on the men's side, I do have a little bit of a change on the men's side. So, yeah. Um, it'll be UConn, Houston, Arizona, and Tennessee. Tennessee, I'm really liking Tennessee. Dalton Connect, you know, just absolute studs. Sakai Ziegler, uh, you know, just they have a solid team. Arizona, of course, Caleb Love, also very solid. Houston, you know, even though they got smacked by Iowa State, definitely still solid. And then, of course, the defending champs. I mean, uh, honestly, you know, the Purdue bracket is the easiest of the brackets, but I'm thinking Tennessee will take care of business. I just don't, I just don't see Purdue getting all the way. And then I still, my, my champion coming from the men's side is still Houston, still going to be the Houston Cougars. That is my prediction for, you know, who I think will stay the champion. I still think it will be Houston. Um, the way this team can play, the way this defense is, uh, man, you know, there's been a few games, you know, where they've been caught off guard, but I still think it's better than, you know, you know, having UConn repeat. I just love a new champion. I just want to be different. So, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Houston will get the bid and, you know, get, get, the, get to the Final Four, you know, take down. Uh, I think Tennessee, I think Tennessee's on that side of the bracket, you know, and then they will take down UConn, and then bada-bing, bada-boom, bada-bam. Houston cuts down the Nets. That's what I'm thinking of. I'm still thinking that. So there you all have it. That's it for me. Um, you know, th there's mm, th this is going to be one hell of a March Madness for us all, we got three long weeks with this man. Cannot wait to get the party started with the first four on what Tuesday and Wednesday, right? Yeah, Tuesday and Wednesday uh, for both the men's and the women's sides. And then, of course, the real fun begins on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Just going to be beautiful to watch. Just, mm, just perfection. Um, brackets will be busted. I know my bracket is going to be busted very early on because you know it just it's just the way it is. But yeah, my final four, your final four. What does your final four look like? Who who do you think is going to cut down the nets on both sides of the brackets? You know, on the both the men's and women's brackets. Who do you think is going to cut down the nets? Um, it's definitely going to be way more interesting to follow the women's final, the women's at least, at least the women's side of things is definitely going to be way more interesting. You know, because of how top heavy it is, you know, and the unpredictability of the men's side is still there. So don't don't forget about that. But yeah, there's gonna be elite matchups on the women's side, and there's gonna be craziness as usual on the men's side. So just take those two things into account when you're watching over the next couple of weeks. Take those two things into account. If you don't, I'll see you in you know about three weeks or so when we talk. You know who, the, who these champions are going to be, and a little bit more NBA. You know, as the NBA is closing itself out. You know, so I'll see you all in about three weeks for that. So take care, have a good night, and I'll talk to y'all even more soon. <laughs>